from Hollywood. What? It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Yes! That's awesome! <laughs> and now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it at 1-800-5-800-TOM. 1-800-5-800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Taking a look at our favorite publication around here, Beer Magazine. Beer Magazine, baby. We read it religiously. We've got several copies in the studio. And we read it all the time. And uh, I am looking at the, uh, this is the uh, January and February edition of Beer Magazine, so it goes back a couple of months, but uh, we have them all here in the studio. And they have an article in here called, 15 Things to Never Do at a Bar. And the list is interesting, but there's one that we've been talking about here in the studio. One of the 15 things they recommend you not do at a bar. Let me read to you what it says. It's got a, an illustrative photograph in here. It says, in, in number seven, one of the 15 things you should not do at a bar, talk at the urinal. Says here, the bathroom isn't a social place for men. It's a place of business. It should be treated like military training. Form a line, break off into sections, complete the task, and leave. Conversations from outside should end when entering the arena. Standing there exposed and talking to your buddy isn't acceptable. Nor is firing up a conversation with the stranger next to you. You're in the bathroom for a maximum of two minutes, which is a good time for a little self-reflection and not a place to talk about the day. Now, let's talk about this for a second. Uh, I uh, completely agree with this. I, I do not understand guys who insist on striking up a conversation at the urinal. And no offense to my big fans out there, but the number one offenders... Now imagine this, okay? <laughs> Here I am, trying to keep it on the DL, okay? Got to take a leak. And so I slide into the men's room, and I'm standing there, yeah. You know how it works. I'm kind of standing there at the can. <sighs> Nobody notices me. And suddenly the guy next to me is like, Hey! I was just talking to my buddy over here. You're Tom Likas, aren't you? You know, and uh, <laughs> I am there just trying to get the job done. You know what I'm talking about? The worst thing I do is respond to him because the minute I, I admit that it's me, he's like, Hey, Charlie, come here. It is Tom Likas. This is him over here. Take, we were just talking about this. My buddy noticed you coming into the bathroom over here. He said, I think that's Tom Likas. And I, I, he didn't want to come up to you, you know, but uh, hey, never stop me. You know, you seem like the kind of guy you can walk up and talk to, you know. Hey, can I get your autograph? Unfortunately, at that time, the only writing instrument I have in my hand doesn't write with ink. <laughs> I'm going to autograph your shoe here in a second, pal. Now, those are the worst offenders, but I don't understand. You know, it, chicks love to use the bathroom as a social occasion. <laughs> That's why they go in packs. 
They go in there. They chit-chat about this and that. They do makeup in there, et cetera. But if you're a true guy, you don't go into the bathroom and have a conversation. In fact, I don't feel good about being in the bathroom at the same time there's other people I know in there. I mean, believe me, when I'm in the bathroom and there's somebody in there I know, it's an accident. Like, it's it's a coincidence. The last thing I would do is turn to my friends and say, hey, anybody got to go take a leak? Come on, let's go. <laughs> then when you're in the bathroom, it's like, uh, hey, Gary, isn't that Ryan Seacrest over there? Take a look. I think that's him. What's he doing in the men's room? <laughs> I think that's Harvey Levin over there. Look at that. What's he doing in here? Oh, crap. He's taking out his trio and taking a picture of me in the bathroom. Anyway, I mean, come on. It, 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 should men be having conversations in the bathroom? And what is it about women who use the bathroom as a place to socialize? I don't get it. Like it. Like 1 800 5800 Town. Like 1 800 5800 866. I've been listening to you since I was four years old. You're like a third parent to me. It's the Tom Likey Show. 97.1 Free FM. SoCal's FM Talk Station. Like a show. One eight hundred five eight hundred talk is our telephone number. What is it with people who go to the bathroom and have a conversation? Get in, get out, get it done. Dave on the Tom Like a show. Hello, Tom. I don't know what you're doing wrong. I work for a huge corporation, and the guys at the top they always get their own bathroom in their office. And I'm not talking just your own bathroom. You got to personalize it. You got to make it nice. Put a fish tank in there. Get rid of Dean's area. Put a bathroom over there just for you. Put a fish tank in there. Put a nice golden toilet. Your throne. Put a pretty girl in there in a bikini, yeah. and and just have her stand there. And with, and all her job is only to wipe your hands when you get out and wash your hands. I like that. And to spray you with some some of your aftershave. See, you know? that's why that, that's why I like having a studio at home because I have all of that at home. Hot chicks, golden toilets, it's all there. But with all the money you're making, why are you going to the bathroom with everyone else? Well, because uh, they have put us in the back of a back lot of a movie studio in Hollywood. Why are you tolerating this? Be in the dump, be in the dump, but have, tell them you need uh, to Here's the option. I could do the show from the radio station, but then I'd have to be at the radio station. The radio station has nicer bathrooms. It has nicer studios. But then you're at the radio station. I'm just telling you, it costs, what, 10, 20 grand to put in a nice area for you to do your business? Uh, put an internet access in there. Look, this company won't even buy us a billboard, for God's sake, or a TV commercial to promote our product. Tom, because remember, because remember our slogan here: we we just sell advertising. We don't believe it works when you have to buy it. I'm just saying that doing your business is an important thing, and you got to be comfortable. You got to walk I into agree. the office, and you got to tell them, "I'm I'm not going to stand for this. I need a throne." I need a throne to do my business. Uh, do you on. want to uh, represent me? Maybe you'd like to call uh, the program director and uh, set that up. I will, I'll go down there right now. Look, if Dean's not going right. to stand up for you, I will go down there right now. Dean will, will, the office Dean office. will give you the address. Now, he is dyslexic, so you might want to check the address uh, once after he gives it to you. <laughs> okay. Take care, Tom. Blow me up. I'll blow you up, baby. <laughs> One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. It's Mike on the Tom Likes Show. Hello. Hey Tom, couldn't agree with you more. 
But, you know, there's a new problem that's now developing, and I think I heard it earlier on uh, Carolla in the morning, but it's so true in that these, what is it that's so self-important that you have to friggin' talk on your cell phone while you're friggin' in the bathroom, you know, doing your business? Well, the worst part about that is the people who don't start producing because they're talking on the phone. So they, like, kind of reserve their space in front of the john. But but they they don't unzip their fly and get the process in motion because they don't want the person at the other end to hear any of the splashback. Right. I mean, I mean, the idea that you know your hands are free so that you know you go in with a hand free set. I mean, it, it can't wait for you for thirty seconds. Do you want to know, by the way, how many times people have called me and I know they're in the toilet? <laughs> and I want to say, got to wait for that flush. Somebody I know. And I'm not going to name him because I don't want to uh, humiliate him. Somebody I know has a telephone that is extra sensitive. <laughs> and so as far as I could tell from the 16-minute voicemail I received, I think he was in a public toilet in like a park or somewhere. And just about, just about the time his pants hit the floor, I think it dialed my number. <laughs> And he was in the stall, by the way. He was not at the urine. Classic. And I heard every every sheet of paper being torn. Uh, plop, plop, fizz, fizz. I hear the kids being dropped off at the pool. Say what you will. It was all happening on this voicemail. Well, you know, he's got to be careful, too, because, you know, you spend too long and you got to worry about the wide stance problem, especially like in Minnesota. Yes. Hey, take me out, Kobe style. I'll take you out, Kobe style. Here you go. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Oh. Yeah, you see, oh. you think caller ID is good. <laughs> okay. Well, how about when uh, you have your phone in your pocket and you drop your pants and it hits the letter T for the speed dial of Tom Likas or L or whatever. And then um, every sound is memorialized permanently. By the way, I saved that voicemail for weeks. And it was over 16 minutes of doing the business, pulling up the old pants, buttoning, snapping. Uh, no hand washing. <laughs> Did not hear water running. <laughs> Left the bathroom without washing his hands. Went out, got into a conversation with somebody about I couldn't really tell what, but I could hear the voice of the individual. <laughs> and he was just having like a nice little walk in the park or something. It was great. You know, it's like like my BlackBerry. Um, it has speed dial. It has speed dial. You know, my BlackBerry has speed dial. It's great. You just press one letter down and it dials like whoever. So the other day, Art, I don't know if you got a hang-up call the other day. While we were on the air, it was for me. Because I accidentally hit A, <laughs> which uh, happens to be the first letter in the second row. So I accidentally hit A, and it dialed you. <laughs> That's what that was. So now imagine if I've got this in my pocket, and, uh, you know, they've got that Dell deal over there, Dell Taco, and suddenly I, I have to spend a little time uh, by myself in the stall. And the minute my pants hit the floor, there's uh, the, the A gets uh, jostled. <laughs> That's coming. I'll show you Feed the Beast. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Uh, this here is, <laughs> keep it clean, Max. Uh, believe me, they're, they're, uh, they're, there are people trying to get promotions here with their finger on the button. Hello. Hello. Yes. Yeah, hi, Tom. Hi. Long time listener, first time caller. <laughs> Long time listener, first time caller. That's right, my own. So I got a quick story for you. I'm working, uh, selling a, uh, let's not mention names, but selling uh, basically a program over the phone, a healthcare program. A woman calls in as a customer, going to buy it. And in the middle of the call, she says, Dick, can you hold on for a second? <laughs> I got a condition here, and it's giving me diarrhea. Can you hold on for a second? <laughs> True story. 
So I say, do you want me to call you back? I said, no, you know, I can hold on. That's okay. So I held on. She, t- she took the phone into the can with her? She got, yeah, yeah. Took the phone in the can. I had to wait. I said, all right, well, if it's if it's what she told me, it probably isn't going to take very long, but I'll bump. <laughs> I wait. That she's done. And that was the end of it. That was the end of what? The call. <laughs> oh, she hung up after that? Yeah, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know what? I'll do this another time. Yeah. So first she gave a little performance, and then that was it. Maybe exactly. she's just maybe she is just an excretory exhibitionist. I could be, could be. Sometimes I wonder about people like that. You know, they I think they want you to hear them. Well, I, my thought was, I mean, come on, dear. I mean, you actually tell a total stranger what your medical condition is over the phone while he waits while she, you do your business, and I'm and I hear the entire thing over the phone. And you're calling to to buy the product that we're selling. It was it just made no sense. Anyway, uh, can you yes. take me out. To, uh, what's a good one? African tribal style. African tribal style. I certainly can, Max. Baninge, 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 so penza. Baninge, 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 so penza. Kota lenenge asika mama. We're talking about a, 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 a suggestion in Beer Magazine that the guys should just not be having conversations in the men's room. Get in, get it done, get out. Mike on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hello, Dad. Hello, son. Yeah, how about the, when you go to a bar and there's a line for the urinals and you always got some jerk that's got a stupid line, you know, you shake it more than twice, you're playing with it? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I got the comeback I always uh, do whenever... Hopefully it's comeback. clean, Mike. Oh, it is. I say if you don't shake it more than twice, you're cheating yourself. <laughs> Boys, the Idaho check it in there, by the way. I love getting calls from Heartland. What <laughs> 800 800 tom It's Danielle on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Danielle. I just wanted to know why you don't have your phone locked so that you can... Um, so you don't accidentally dial people. I have to have that on my phone because I have a habit of accidentally calling people and talking about them, and then they know what I said about them, and then I just have to admit that I did that. But Do you know one night, uh, th- this is a true story, and I'm not going to say who the person was or anything, but, but Gary and I were having a drink at the old Trader Vic's over here uh, at uh, you know, in the Beverly Hilton Hotel, okay? Uh-huh. We're having a drink, and I met this relatively hot chick at the bar who was totally down with, I think, whatever I wanted to do. Uh huh. So, Gary, uh, who, you know, Gary and I have been each other's wingman many times, so Gary uh, chats up, uh, I think it was her friend or some other chick at the bar, and I'm having a chat with this chick. And uh, at the same time, my girlfriend at the time is sitting home, and the phone rings. And it's a call from a bar somewhere, which sounds like my voice in the distance having a conversation with somebody. And, of course, you don't hang up when that happens. You keep listening to see what you can hear. And I am going on and on and on with this chick. Unfortunately for me, I think there might have been a bit of a language barrier or something going on because... She was not able to understand exactly what I was saying, but I was pretty much explaining what I wanted to do and where I wanted to do it. <laughs> and and so later on, uh, it's I, I I come home and I I I am met at the front door with, uh, "Did you call me earlier?" Uh yes, yeah, yes, and I couldn't hear. I said I couldn't hear a word you were saying. I said. She said, well, it sounded like you were talking. Well, yes, I was talking. She, I, it sounded like I heard a female voice there. I said, oh, yes, yes, there I was with the sales department of the radio station. We were talking about an ad campaign. Did you hear that? Oh, my. But fortunately, she could not hear exactly what I really was saying. Fortunate for you. Which essentially was arranging where we were going to get together and get the job done. Oh my goodness! I I lock my phone. I I, I I I made the mistake of accidentally calling um my ex husband and 
I, I was talking about what my lawyer was telling me to do and everything, and he heard everything. But fortunately, I knew the past. I, I knew how to get into his voicemail. He had that message saved, but I erased oh. it for him. You know the worst thing people do, and I've done it, and I think everybody's done it at least once, is, you know... Now, now, phone, it was a time when you could only store 10 numbers in a phone, and then it was 99 numbers. And now, with these smartphones, it's pretty much limited to the size of your, your flash memory. So you could have thousands and thousands of numbers. And so when I, like, have no use for anybody anymore, uh, frequently I don't take their number out of the phone. And do you know how many times I've looked down in horror at the phone and, like, it says connecting and it has the name of a person that not only have I not talked to in a long time, I never plan to talk to this person ever again. And I hear them going, hello, hello. <laughs> do you know how many times that has happened? It could have happened to me a couple times. I can imagine with you. Don't get me, don't get me started on the drunk dialing. You know, if I've got a thousand phone numbers in there, essentially it's the history of the world part two. It's like everybody I've banged in the 21st century and maybe a couple of years before, and they're all in there. <laughs> all of them. I, I tend to delete people. When I'm done with them, I delete them out of my phone. Guys. Well, you know, guys are, you know what? Everybody you stop banging at some point. You know, they married another guy or they moved in with a boyfriend. You know, at some point they're going to break up with that guy. Okay. So you want to have that number for that time. And then what you do is you, you go through your tickler file every six months with a name. And you say, hey, how's, it, how's married life? How's it going? <laughs> oh, when did that happen? Oh, really? Well, so are you doing okay? Maybe we should have a drink. <laughs> <laughs> so guys don't ever delete numbers. You keep every number in there. You never know. It's like... How about the guys who keep every Playboy magazine going back to 1956? And some of them they haven't looked at in years, but you never know. One day you're going to be, you know, lie on there, spread eagle, there in your 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 boyhood bedroom or wherever. And uh, suddenly uh, Miss uh, 1971 is looking pretty good right now. And you, <laughs> you decide you need to pull that one out. <laughs> it's kind of that way with phone numbers. Oh, okay. I Somebody I was completely fed up with at the, the one point and just start looking fresh and new at some point in time. <laughs> you notice the guys do that, right? They save porn for going back like decades. Yeah, yeah. Now, they appear to never look at it, but in reality, every once in a while, you pull an old one out. Oh. Well, I go lock your phone, Tom, and can you blow me up? I certainly can. Here you go. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Nola on the Tom Liges show. Nola is the abbreviation for New Orleans, Louisiana, isn't it? Hello. Kind of. Hi, Tom. How are you? I'm okay. I have an interesting question. You were talking about the topic in the bathroom and the phone. Well, my boyfriend for the last two months, every time I go to the bathroom, either number one or number two, he wants to videotape me really? and go and watch me. And for two weeks, I fought him and said no. And for the last two weeks, I've been letting him. So what? So, so you've been letting him film that, or you've been filming it? I haven't it? let him film it yet. He wants to, but I've let him come in there with me. And I was wondering, have you ever heard this before? Is it no, a fetish? That, well, sure, it's a fetish. It's certainly not the kind of fetish I find appealing in another person. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was kind of weird. I mean, I have to imagine there's probably people out there, you know, because your phone, many phones now have like that video capability. I wonder how many people are like, hey, why don't you go into the stall and like videotape yourself and then send that to me? Yeah, and he always comes in the shower, Tom. I'll be washing myself up and he'll come in the shower and he looks at me and then he'll say cute little comments and then he turns the water on ice cold and then leaves the bathroom. And I'm like, I can't believe you. Stop it. He likes to see me in my intimate moments. It, it doesn't really? matter what it is. Well, what intimate moments are left when you live with a boyfriend? <laughs> That's kind of true. I mean, I give him his face and he gives me mine, though. I'm not like a clingy type woman. I'm not a relationship guy at this point in time, but uh, every <laughs> relationship I ever had, I can pretty much trace the deterioration of the relationship uh, mm -hmm. with the day she left the bathroom door open instead of closing it behind her. Yeah. She yeah. stopped caring whether I saw her sitting on the can. Uh -huh, that was uh -huh. pretty much the end. Uh, pretty much, that's the line of demarcation. Well, me and my boyfriend love you. You're you're our idol. 
you and Adam Carolla are just the best people on the radio. And I, we just want to tell you that everything you talk about, we listen to every day. And my boyfriend and I just crack up, and I just want to see your input on it and see if I should videotape it. He just recently got into it. Oh, are you into that? I mean, would that uh, would it make you happy to make him happy? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm that really? kind of girl. I'm, I'm real open-minded. And now, after I mean, after you break up with him and he posts it on YouTube and it's it's number one ahead of the cat in the washing machine, uh, will you uh, have a problem with that? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. Because then we're all going to get to see him. But, I mean, really, I don't mind. I don't mind. I'm pretty open-minded about a lot of things. Really? Is it, is it worth it, though? So if we saw your foo-foo on, on YouTube, you wouldn't have a problem with that? I probably wouldn't. I mean, if I was making money off of it, maybe not. But well, YouTube well, is one making money. <laughs> that's right. You know? So you wouldn't mind if we all got a look? No, no. I, I really? think it's pretty nice to look at. So, I mean, I, I don't think... Well, but it depends on what it's doing, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. We've already made a couple of personal, like, little pictures and stuff like that. Yeah, I know. He sent those into us. <laughs> yeah. He sent those into you? Yes, he did. I was was the one who told him to video you in the bathroom. (laughs) You're the one that told him to video me in the bathroom? Yes, that was me. (laughs) Well, you know what? Tom, he loves you. And he's the one that got me. I listened to you up throughout the years, and I called you about the bootycall.com a couple months back. Yes. And we love you. And I'm not one of those girls that, you know, stuck in the early 1900s. I'm a pretty strong-minded woman. Really? Yes, I am. Giving her man what he needs. Where I want. Video live from the toilet. (laughs) Well, thank you, Tom. Can you take me out, Tribal Star? I certainly can. Tom Likas. 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 866. You're absolutely right. Getting married is beyond nuts. I mean, anyone who decides to get married is crazy. I've been there, done that. There is no fun in it. You know, there's so much fun before you get married, but after you get married, like, the fun is over. It's done. It's the Tom Likas Show. 97.1 Free FM. SoCal's FM Talk Station. From Hollywood, my name is Tom Likas. It's one 800 800 tom Our conversation this hour began with an article in Beer Magazine talking about things men should not do at a bar. One of the things they suggested men not do is talk at the urinal. Good idea. Don't talk at the urinal. Shut up. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's Taylor on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. How are you? Do you care? I do care. I love you very much. I care very much. Ooh, I'm doing great. Well, I avoid public bathrooms as much as possible, but unfortunately at work when I have to go, it never fails. Every time I go in there, there's some chick in the stall not only going number two, which is... I don't understand why you can't do that at home, but they have to do it at work. And uh, you know, I you know why I think it is. I think there are many women who are just trying to kill as much time as possible during the day. I yes, probably that makes sense. You know, they go to the water cooler. They <laughs> uh, they stand around the Xerox machine. They put little thingies up in their cubicle. They go to the bathroom six times a day. I, I do believe there are women who are just trying to kill as much time as possible. Oh, definitely. Or they're out, you know, on their phones, you know, or... Oh, okay, right. one. Exactly. And so, you know, I, sometimes I have to go, but when I do, they're not only in there doing that, but they're moaning to themselves, grunting, exhaling loudly. And really? I'm, just, I'm, I'm appalled. I'm in horror. I just wow. run out of there as fast as possible. And it's happened so many times. It's almost daily. Oh, my and God. And I don't know if it's the same and... I don't know if it's the same fat, fugly girl... It has some kind of a problem, or if it's just know. something in the company, but it's horrible, and I I don't know, Tom, but I don't know if anyone else has experienced that, but, I mean... 
saying this as cleanly as I possibly can. Yes. Um, I once, uh, I don't want to call it dating, because we were just having sex. I was once having a a, a completely sexual relationship with a woman uh, who just couldn't stop thinking about sex 24-7. Mm-hmm. And so she'd call me from that stall. <laughs> and, uh, you know, she'd, uh, yeah. she'd be doing number three, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I don't know, Tom. Yeah, I just, it's pretty disgusting. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with these chicks, but. Number but one and number two are one thing, but you haven't lived until a woman calls you from the stall with number three. I hope I don't experience that, but I'll take your word for it. Imagine if you now you're in the women's room and there's some woman in there. Well, there her. is a there is a person on our floor who dresses like a woman, and I don't. I've always wondered what stall they choose, but um, oh boy, yeah, there. It's a. She's actually kind of cute. You know, you can totally tell it's a guy, but she dresses a lot. Cuter Thank than God, you know, working in an office today where you have to pretend that it's not funny when you see the pre ops coming in and stuff. <laughs> Well, lots of people, you know, are talking, and I'm like... They hire the tards and stuff, and you're supposed to just say, oh, good morning. Like, come on. Well, you know you can't be too loud about it, because you'll get I haven't worked in a real office in so long. I don't think I could do it now, because it's so politically correct in the office. I couldn't do that stuff. It's a trip. She's out there. She's in, you know... I'm used to walking in here. I am used to walking in here and telling the guys what I really think about everything. (laughs) <laughs> I don't think I could be in the office and to have to, like, clamp myself down. I don't think I could do it. You know, I just, I don't care. You know, you want to dress up. I don't, I don't know. I'm just kind of, I'll smile at her, you know, or him, whatever. It's cool. But, yeah, it's it's crazy, you know. I remember the first, I, I saw her walking and I wasn't sure. And I saw these other people, they completely did a 360 and just the look on their face. So if I, I, were, that if I were working in an office like you, you know, here's what would happen, okay? There I'd be at the office one day. And I'd see somebody coming in, and I'd look over at the other guys. I'd say, and <laughs> and then I would have to catch myself. <laughs> now, the guys heard what I said. What if I said that on the air? We'd be in big trouble. I'm sure. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but I would say that. Well, we definitely can't say that. No. But. I mean, I, I for example, I could not say, I couldn't do that. Right. That would get me in big trouble. But I can say it here, where nobody can hear me. Must be nice. It's great. Tom, I just have to say that I'm listening to you online in Phoenix. I download your podcast and listen to them while I'm at work now. I finally figured out that I can do that. And I miss you very much. Well, in, let you. me tell you something. In July, CBS Radio has made an amazing, amazing uh, uh, discovery. They have discovered a piece of software that they'll be releasing to you. You will be able to use your iPhone to listen to the live stream like you're listening to uh, any other radio station. That would be awesome. I mean, it's a reason to buy an iPhone. Exactly. I would totally do that. Just for Tom, that's about it. Absolutely. Well, I was listening to Adam, and he's cool, but I miss Tom so much. And I was like, you know what? I bet you I could put these on my iPod, and I, I've been hooked, dude. This whole week, I've just been, I'll come home, I'll delete the ones I already heard, and I'll add new ones, and that's what I'm listening to. No more music, no more anything. Just Tom. I All love it. it. Yes. And I've also been listening to you, well, my mom listened to you back in the day when I was about five, you know, when you were more political. And I, ever since I was five years old, I could hear your voice talking about rubbers before I even knew what those were. and. Mm-hmm. Then I got old enough to learn about it, and then I'm a Tom Likas fan myself. So. And you never got knocked up, right? Never, never, never. Good. Never. No kids for me, that's for sure. I like it. All right, Tom. Well, thank you. Well, Taylor, thank you. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Sonia on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Um, you hit the spot for me right now when you were talking about, um, a little while ago, keeping your ex's phone numbers. Yes. And let me tell you, I've been single since February of this year, and I hate that about a year ago, when I got serious with my ex-boyfriend, I deleted all of my ex's phone numbers. And by ex, I don't mean ex-boyfriend. I mean people I've hooked up with. And um, so sometimes I'll be, you know, either having a couple cocktails with my girlfriends and deciding, hmm, I won't give somebody a call. And I look and I'm like, oh, God. 
why don't I have this person's phone number? And I, I know they would be open to hooking up with me at a certain time just randomly. Right. And, well, here's the other thing. Here's the other problem of deleting them out of your phone, okay? Uh, a caller ID doesn't work the same way on a cell phone as it does on a landline. You don't have the name of the caller unless you've entered them in your phone book. Exactly. So, so here's what happens. Let's say... In fact, this has happened to me. Let's say in my case, there's a chick. I just don't want to talk to her anymore. I've had enough. So I delete her. Well, six months from now, I don't remember her name or her phone number. And then she starts sending me text messages. But I don't know the name of the person. All I see is a phone number. Well, I so I get text messages. Message. I get text messages every week and they say, hey, what are you doing? I make sure if I send somebody a text message, I write, hey, it's Sonia what's going on but if i don't have that person's number to send a message to people who know i don't want to talk to them purposely don't put their name <laughs> yeah well that's not that's not that's smart for them but that's not really cool that's where's i going to get them anyway well i can tell you nowhere but uh, then it's a big waste of my time trying to avoid the call delete it and let me tell you dating is hard i've been single since february and let me if I you don't do it right know, I don't even know what I want, Tom. Like, I meet people, and I don't even know what I want from them. I don't want a relationship. I don't want something committed. I listen to you, and you're definitely, you know, motivation, motivational. You, you keep me on track. Where I don't even know what I want from a guy anymore. You uh, got me confused. I know what you want. <laughs> and I, I got it. it all the time. I got it right here. And let me tell you, can I make a comment about <laughs> going to the bathroom? A comment about what? You didn't put it that way, dear, but all right. I'm a little a little too outspoken. I'm sorry, but I, I go to work, and I go about two to three times a day, and you better believe that I'm going to go at work if I have to go. I'm not going to be holding anything in. <laughs> you don't sound like the kind of girl who holds anything in. And I'll walk out of there, and I'll tell my, my coworkers, give it 20 to 30 minutes. Give it 20 to 30 minutes? I have no shame, Tom. Darling, fiber car, Metamucil, step it up. What are you doing? Right now I'm driving on the 10th street. I don't mean west. now. I mean, come on, 20 to 30 minutes in the bathroom? <laughs> no, after I come out, I tell my coworkers, give it 20 to 30 oh, minutes. Oh, I see. So you've been to Del Taco also? Not necessarily, but I eat a lot of fiber. <laughs> Fiber's not the problem. It's those bean, it's those bean burritos, dear. <laughs> no bean burritos for me, but I have a good metabolism. All right. Just keeping an eye on you, darling. <laughs> and I'm going to keep it that way. I don't care what anybody thinks. All right. Very good. <laughs> All right. You have a nice day, Tom, and take me out uh, old school style. Of course. 1-800-5800-TOM. Here comes Brian on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. What's going on, Tom? How you doing? I'm doing a radio show here, Brian. Good, good, man. Well, I just, uh, first of all, I want to say that that, that last caller, um, I, I don't think I'll ever look at women the same. That's disgusting as hell. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, uh, I wanted to call. I don't want to take up too much of your time, but uh, I wanted to call, and I have a story about... Uh, the urinal. I had just gotten uh, hired at uh, at investment bank, and um, walking into the bathroom my very first day, and uh, the CEO of the company comes in and uh, starts striking a conversation as he's uh, as he's taking a pee, and uh, probably one of the most disgusting experiences I've ever had. That's very, how very that's how he became the CEO. <laughs> I guess so. I guess that kind of so. over the back fence conversation. Exactly, exactly. So, uh, In fact, they changed yeah. it. They, he was the CEO. He became the PEO, which was very exciting. <laughs> hey, well, long-time listener, first-time caller, Tom. You're doing a great thing, um, and uh, keep on doing what you're doing, man. Thank you so much for that. Adrian on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Adrian. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing okay. Long time, first time, as always. Thank you. All right. I got a little story for you. I'm actually calling you from the urinal right now. I see. <laughs> well, I used to work at this mortgage company, about 200 loan officers there. Two bathrooms for the whole floor. Every time you go to the bathroom, there's always someone on their headset trying to close a loan. Oh, my God! Thanks a lot for the call. The Tom Likas Show.